Well, Don, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for, thank you for coming. Um, can you explain to us a little bit about yourself and uh, your work with the Net Generation? Well, I, I started studying kids as a generation many years ago, 15 years ago, and, and I noticed how my own kids were able to use this complicated technology. And at first I thought they were prodigies, but um, then I realized that all their friends were like them, so that there was something really big happening here. So I started working with uh, 300 kids, and I wrote Growing Up Digital. That was back in 97. And um, it's been a side line for me, but it's been uh, one that I have great passion for and I care about a lot. Because I'm convinced that now that they've grown up digital, I mean, your generation is different. Uh, you're coming into the workforce, into the marketplace, into society, and this is a very powerful force for change, and change for the better. No, that's really interesting. Yeah, I know we're known as digital natives. So if we're looking at the products of globalization, the internet and mobile telephony, how have those um, products um, affected the net generation's expectations for their career? For their career? Yeah. Well, um, kids are wired all the time and they're mobile. Mm. And so when they come into the workforce, they want to be connected. And they want to be connected wherever they are and uh, whenever. Uh, at, a, at any point in time. So the third screen, not television, not the PC, but that mobile device is, is, the, is the key device. They want freedom, freedom of mobility. They want freedom of choice. Um, choice is kind of like oxygen for this generation. They want to be able to collaborate and to have the, the tools at their fingertips to do that. Of course, in our corporations, we react badly. Um, they're coming into the workforce with this new culture, high performance, collaboration, innovation, great tools, better than exist in many of our companies. And, you know, what do we do? We stick them in a, a cubicle and we supervise them and treat them like Dilbert and then we take away the tools. In institution after institution, we do the opposite of what we should do. Um, net Jenners are also seen as quite disloyal. Um, but I've noticed that, we've noticed that they're particularly very, very fiercely loyal to their social networks. So what's going on and what can employers really do to gain that same level of passionate loyalty um, from their net geners? Well, disloyalty is sort of a pejorative term that comes from an employer about a youngster who has the power to move around. and. Um, who at their fingertips has enormous information and knowledge and networks and, and the ability to carve out and design their own lives. So what do we do? We try and change them as a generation to want to come and just sit in a cubicle and work for us the way the traditional generations have done? Or do we change our organizations to embrace all the powerful stuff about their culture, culture of innovation and, and of, of speed and, and of... Uh, and of collaboration and, and so on. So to me, um, the, you know, on the other hand, you, you, you want to, if you have great human capital, you want to try and keep them. But keeping them doesn't necessarily mean keeping them inside the boundaries of your company. Like you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. You know, you can have their talent, but they're, but they're part of a network, an alumni network, a business web, whatever. And that can be very powerful. Uh, Ogilvy One, the big ad agency in New York, Brian Featherstonha, the CEO, says the best ad people there don't actually work for Ogilvy. They have them, they're part of their business web, but they're not on the, the payroll. And um, that's my whole business model, is I've networked with all kinds of talent, and they're not inside my boundaries, but I still have them. So how about net geners as consumers? What can companies do to adapt their products to that generation? Well, I think uh, most of what we know about marketing is wrong. First of all, they're not really interested in products. Um, they're interested in, in an experience. Even if it's something like a great handbag that looks like a product, it's actually the whole experience of going and, and, and purchasing that and the relationship that you have with that company. You know, you've got your own whatever. And um, so, they're also a, a generation that wants to have relationships with companies. They don't want to just be sold to. They don't 
uh, watch television ads as much as previous generations. A lot of them cut them out. So you need to find new ways of getting to their networks and influencing them in new ways. Um, they're a generation that cares a lot about integrity. They want you to be a good company. And increasingly that, that means more than just being honest or abiding by your commitments or, or, or you know, having transparency or, or being considerate and caring and so on. It means that we want you to behave well in the world. We don't want you externalizing your costs onto society. We want you to be a green company. Uh, we want you to understand that, you know, the world is an interconnected place and we as young people are going to inherit the world and we want you to contribute to that world being a better one. So one more question. So what actually do you think is the biggest opportunity that the net generation will bring to global business? Well, to me, first of all, it's the biggest generation ever, not in Europe. It's a huge issue. Mm. Um, biggest generation ever. They have a whole new culture. Um, Technology is like the air to them. They've grown up bathed in bits. They're a generation of collaborators and of innovators and um, a generation that, that likes things to happen fast, that, that, that wants to customize things. And as they come into the workforce, we have a big opportunity to embrace that culture to change our whole modus operandi and how we manage our companies, how we think about talent, how we think about collaboration rather than traditional old hierarchies. I'm your boss. You know, a boss is someone who's an authority on everything. We build these new high-performance uh, collaborative systems that are in many ways part of their culture. In the marketplace, they come into the marketplace, they, they view companies very differently, they want to be engaged, they want to co-innovate, get them to co-create products with you. Don't just, don't just focus on your customers, co-innovate with them. Uh, they view the, band, the brand very differently. A brand is not just an image. In some ways it's a relationship and they want, the, the, at the base of the brand is this idea of integrity, that this is, this is a company that, that has integrity as part of its bones and that really cares. So, um, and that, as they come into every institution in society, they're bringing about very profound change. You know, and organizations and leaders that understand this can do well. I mean, Barack Obama understood this, and uh, he created a platform whereby a new generation brought him to power. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Oh, you too. <laughs>